embedding things in an experience, engaging the senses around something, for example, and associating goods with your sensory experiences and with other things creates a whole complex story surrounding those goods, and it creates meaning. So it's not just passive. And this is really important. I mean, you know, the human brain is designed to aggregate all of this information together and create a story and arrive at some sort of interesting conclusion based on its inputs. So we're talking today about the experience economy. And basically what this refers to is you know, typically in economics, we think about goods and services. And that just means producing a good and giving somebody money in exchange for that good. And the notion of the experience economy basically extends that beyond the simple exchange of a physical item and money or exchange for a service and some money. And the notion is that that item can have an experience embedded around it. And a typical example would be Starbucks. So a cup of coffee is a good, and it is very easy to make. It's very cheap to make a single cup of coffee. But you can go into a Starbucks or other coffee shops and pay 2 or $3 for a cup of coffee. And it costs much more than it takes to make the cup of coffee. And so the value of that item, the value of that good, increases substantially because it's embedded within an experience. And that experience is going into the coffee shop, smelling the beans, potentially interacting with people and running into people. It's a whole experience surrounding drinking that coffee. And the notion of the experience economy was coined in 1999 by Pine and Jim Gilmore, and they have a book about it, and also some YouTube videos, which I can provide the links to below. And one of the things that they really emphasized is that the experiences are a distinct economic offering. So it's completely separate from the other aspects of the transaction. And so they talk about using goods as props and services as a stage that allow you to embed people within these more rich experiences. So the notion of engaging with goods through an experience is something that's really aligned with how we try to process and understand things in the world. It increases the intensity of our engagement with it. It increases the likelihood that we're going to remember it and have more powerful memories about it, and even the chance that we're going to be reminded of it again in the future. So it just really solidifies our experience. And one way to think about this is um, an example from Whole Foods. So Whole Foods is structured around the experience of freshness. They want you to feel that they are a fresh store. And one thing that they do to create that experience is that when you go inside a Whole Foods, they have a bunch of flowers. And, you know, they're not doing this to try to sell you flowers necessarily. There are other items that they could put there that would probably be more beneficial in terms of sales. But the flowers provide the impression of freshness. They water down their vegetables there so that they look like they're fresh, as if they're just on the vine and there's raindrops on them. And that creates a subconscious impression also of freshness, even though that makes the vegetables go bad quicker. Experiences are also embedded in some of the latest things that are starting to catch on, like Uber and Airbnb. I've definitely experienced Uber drivers that decorate their vehicles in a certain way, whether it's like Mardi Gras time and they've got Mardi Gras beads up in front, or if it's Halloween and they've got decorations and they're giving candy. And a lot of people are familiar with how Airbnbs will decorate their homes for people who come in. You know, there's these really fancy kind of items that they seem to purchase, these unique items that make you feel homey. And that's part of the experience of both the Uber experience, and the Airbnb experience. And the importance of experience is demonstrated scientifically. There was a study where they basically compared the amount that people donated to a temple, and these people either engaged in these high ordeal rituals or low ordeal rituals. And with the high ordeal rituals, these people went through all of these things where they had to climb up a mountain and they had to be 
pricked and it involved body piercing it involved carrying heavy objects and even dragging carts that were attacked to hooks to the skin and the other people were in a low ordeal ritual and basically they prayed and chanted and it turned out that the groups that were involved in the high ordeal ritual wanted to donate more to the temple at the end than those in the low ordeal ritual and this is based on the notion that their shared experience which was more tense actually it involved pain which is kind of why it was more intense that shared experience actually helped to bond them together and to enrich their experience and we're basically hardwired to attach more strongly to these memorable experiences that we engage in together so clearly brands want to think about this and brands have been thinking about this and sort of it's something that we do intuitively so Las Vegas is one of the typical examples of the experience economy. When you go there, they have all of the flashing lights and all the hotels, and they try to make it so that you want to stay inside the hotel and never leave, and so on. And that's all an experience, too. But one of the biggest experiences of Las Vegas is all of what's happening inside the conference rooms of the hotels, inside the convention centers. This is where they have trade shows, and this is where experiential marketing applies just as much to B2B businesses as it does to B2C. Because even in the B2B world, people are gathering together and they're meeting up in conference rooms. And basically when they walk about the conference room, everybody is trying to get their attention with their little booths and their things. Everybody's trying to create an experience for them. And then they go out and have dinner together and so on. So the notion of traveling in networking like that, of course, is related to this notion of experiential marketing and the experience economy. And that's largely why Vegas is what it is today. Another example is the Geek Squad. They have designed a whole experience surrounding computer repair, which was different. You know, there's some stereotypes that we have about how people are going to fix our computers, what they're going to look like, what they're going to wear. We expect them to drive a van. But the Geek Squad turned that all in their head. They wore bow ties. They didn't dress like standard computer repair people. They used a badge instead of a typical business card. They basically created a more psychologically complex experience surrounding computer repair. And that made them unique and that made them memorable. Of course, Red Bull is really big on that. They create their own experiences. They've got the flug tog competition where they have people create these vessels that don't fly and then they make them jump off into the water and we all watch them while they slowly and sometimes catastrophically fall into the water. And this is one of the reasons why uh, companies are involved in so many different services. And Red Bull is another example because they actually have their own streaming platform. And so they basically show you a bunch of free content that is related to what they stand for as Red Bull. This notion of experiences is also why we're seeing escape rooms pop up. Basically, what happened with escape rooms is that the haunted house industry realized that they had the capability of creating this experience that didn't depend on one season. They didn't have to just be active during Halloween. And so they could use all of their tools, they could use all of their actors and all of their sets and all of their storytelling to create these escape rooms. And now I think probably everybody has seen these escape rooms that are popping up all across the US in these different cities. And so articles are popping up where we're seeing this happening. There was men's activewear brand Roan that was offering workout classes and basically connecting people who are interested in wearing their sort of activewear with an actual active activity where they could talk to people about their brand. So we see ads popping up. There's Ad Week articles about Harry Potter using 51 Times Square ads to create an immersive theater. There's Breaking Bad pop-ups coming to L.A. for their new El Camino movie. And there was an Oscar ad about how Google is helping you find movie locations. And so now that's creating a real-world experience surrounding a digital experience. And this relationship between real-world experiences and digital experiences is super important. And I'll get into that in the next video. But and the last thing I want to say here is that experiences are so important today that the Wall Street Journal is actually launching its own experience report that is basically focused on events. So 
Overall, we know from psychology that experiences are really important for connecting us psychologically with a brand and for helping us understand what that brand stands for. It makes things more memorable and more impactful, and it makes us talk to people about our experiences. So it basically helps glue us together and solidify our memories. So it's a really important consideration for marketing. Uh, I gave you a bunch of examples. Check the links below to learn more. We're posting regularly about psychological insights related to marketing. So hit that like and uh, share if you share and hit that subscribe button at the bell button. And let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or thoughts about this. Thanks for checking this out.